Welcome to the Innovators by Scandinavian Man, a podcast about our changing world with the people who influence it. On this show, we cover some of the, cover some of the best and brightest minds within design, culture, fashion, technology, and sustainability. Mostly, but not always, from a Scandinavian perspective. I'm Conrad Olson, and my guest today is Fredrik Karlsson. Fredrik is an interior designer, vintage furniture collector, and a social media star. Since launching his business last year, he has worked with both interior and fashion brands like Off-White, Fritz Hansen, and Hestens. His Instagram following is experiencing a, an exponential growth, which has made him one of the most influential new interior personalities today. Fredrik, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Happy to be here. Very good to have you. Um, I'd like to start with, uh, you know... S- some things that happened in the present. I know you just came back from a trip to Paris. And uh, perhaps that's a good entry point into introducing what you do and, and who you are. Because people who follow you on social media, and there are quite a few, saw that you, you know, you're visiting uh, uh, showrooms, visiting exhibitions, museums, and also perhaps scouting some furniture. So how, what was Paris like for you? I like traveling to places where I when I come back, feel very inspired. Mm. And Paris is, of course, one of those places. And um, the reason for the trip was basically inspiration and also networking. And through my passion, through my collecting, I've uh, come in contact with people like galleries, other collectors, and and so on. And... Uh, the, the reason for the trip was, um, was uh, to meet those guys mm. and uh, talk about their journeys and their opinion about all these beautiful things and uh, where we are today. You mentioned to me earlier that, that your um, sort of Instagram following and, and how you've established uh, yourself uh, has opened up the world in a way for you. That you're meeting new types of people that you haven't really met before. Yeah, for sure. And... Uh, for me, everyone's, everyone's just a human being, no matter if you're a head designer of one of the bigger brands in the world or you're my neighbor. Mm. Uh, for me, and I'm really honest when I'm saying that, is, and, I, and I realize that every time passion meets passion, mm. like the prestige just disappears. Mm. If you're a big name or just a normal guy like me, we can sit together, talk, talk like the things that we love and... Yeah, share some experience with each other. Right. It's really nice. What was the most inspiring thing you brought with you from, from Paris? So the, the reason... I, w- I was in Paris the last summer, and then I heard there was going to be a, a huge exhibition with Charlotte Perriand uh, starting in October and running to the end of February, which is now. Right, right. So that was basically the main reason. Uh, but it was also... Well, before the last trip, I sent out a, a, a message to a few, few guys in the business in Paris, some galleries, some other collectors, some just people living there who I'm talking to pretty constantly. And um, what should I do? Uh, where should I go? And maybe the most important, what should I not miss? Mm. And one of those guys were Patrick Sagan, who is uh, like one of the bigger gallerists and... Uh, a little bit of a rock star in the game. <laughs> so he answered me. He told me what to do, what to see. And then um, he, um, he's like, unfortunately, I'm not in town. Otherwise, I, I'd be happy to just show you my home and my private collection. And right, right. so that was... So then I tried to, <laughs> to find a time during the entire fall, basically, to that we can match together. And like when he had time... We has time and when I got time, and then also try to, to see the, the exhibition simultaneously. Mm. But, and then we finally made it happen like a week before the exhibition closed. <laughs> but that was really fun. The, the, the exhibition looks great, by the way. And I've seen not only you, it's, uh, pe- many people in my following yeah. uh, have, have been there. And every time yeah. they are there, they're always posting like 20 pictures from it. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah, and okay. I tried to not post like 20 30 pictures from <laughs> it i tried to to actually pick my actual favorites and right. also for me the most important things that she made because for me she's one of the she's one of the stars mm. and for many as well she kind of changed the the 
the perspective that we see these things from very, very indus- industrial at that time in the 30, 40, 50s to something more that you can use on a daily basis. Mm. Let's talk about where you're standing right now as a, as a professional. I mean, this, I think most people who follow you may not know that you only launched your business last year. And you've had oh, such an exponential <laughs> growth. I think when I started following you, you had like, I don't know, 30,000 followers, like a lot, but yeah, now it's, um, it's, it's maybe. three times that or something. Yeah. Um, what do you think it is about your design sensibility or your aesthetic that it's so successful or appealing to people? It's a good question, but I don't think that much. Uh, I know what I like, mm. and if I like something, I post it. Uh, and I think that's, I hope, like my goal with, with, with my posting, if we can say it in that way, is to actually be genuine. And because I know I know what I I know what I like and I know what I don't like, and for me, I don't want to post something just to get get um, big exposure. It's more important for me to post something that I like and get few com fewer comments, fewer likes, but I can actually stand for it. Mm. And I think maybe I don't know maybe that's the that's why I'm kind of differ from the. From from a lot of people out there, I don't know. Um, I don't look at my myself or my account that way, but I try to stick to who I am, who I want to be seen, and also what I like. Now it's interesting to hear you say that because I think one of the things that is so fascinating about your feed and the, the type of pictures that you post, and and I, there's a foundation in your own apartment. Yeah. Which is it's not a it's not a very huge apartment. No. It's got a few angle, few like a bedroom yeah. and, a, and a living room <laughs> and a kitchen, but somehow you manage to make that apartment look alive and different every time you post from it. Yeah. And I know you know I know now you're using it as sort of a location for for shoots and everything. But when you started out, and that's you know when I started following you, I was like, this guy has a has a has a very very unique sense of of space. Uh, in that you can you can use your own your, your different lighting different angles, and then there's the you know also your obviously your 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 collection of vintage furniture that you're sort of adding and picking and and uh, yeah, you know, it, it it helps <laughs> removing but but uh, I can hear from your when you're talking now it's not it's not perhaps that conscious but I'm curious about wh- when it started when you moved into this place yeah. did you really find that there was something unique about it or th- it, was it a place that you really could come alive as as yourself um, first of all the, the apartment is very photogenic it's uh, it has a great light and it has and of course it is light itself I mean I painted the walls pretty light to have a uh, light floor and it, it, it's it's very light, but <laughs> I, before I, I bought the apartment, I actually, because I, I, sold, I sold another one and I sold a, a few apartments uh, in the past, which is also part of my journey where I am today, because mm. I've done a lot of renovations, not from a business perspective, more like a cu- curiosity. I step into a new place. If I see a potential, I see it. If I, if it doesn't have the the potential that I want to, then I then I skip it. Mm. And so I bought an apartment. I saw obviously I saw something, <laughs> and I tried my best to make it all happen. Like in it, there's a lot of factors involved, like it, the space itself. What can you do? And there's also a financial um, aspect involved. Mm. I mean, I'm not. I cannot do anything. I mean, money stops. <laughs> uh, but then, when, once everything is finished, I'm like, okay, what what I'm gonna do now? Right. Because the the journey, I'm a I'm a I'm more about the journey than than like the feeling afterwards. The feeling afterwards is very very nice, but it's short. But I know it's some of the work you've done. I mean, I know you've you've helped uh, Virgil Abloh with this off-white showroom down in. in mm-hmm. uh, I think it's Milan, right? Not yeah, Paris, it was Milan. Milan yeah. Uh, and these are these are assignments that come off of your Instagram. Yeah. Uh, I don't know Instagram world in, yeah. in a way. Um, when did you start realizing that you you know 
you're kind of picking up speed. When did you start realizing that, okay, I got some, some, some serious guys following me now? That and I think we have to go back to, to all the, to my renovations because that's where it basically all started. Right. Maybe the um, third or fourth apartment, uh, like if we go backwards. How, how many have you done? Uh, seven in eight years, I think. Really? <laughs> so I've been living in a chaos. I've been living more among all the, <laughs> all the boxes than I've been living without them. So mm. I know how it feels to move. Mm. And I don't like moving. I like, yeah, see potential in things and mm. uh, uh, make the best out of it. So we, we have to go back. And I, I, if we go back even longer, I was, a, I was before a personal trainer. And just to go through this very, very shortly, I posted pictures of our training. Right. And people actually contacted me to can, get help. Can you go back into your feed and see photos of all your personal no, the, training? No, all those posts are not any <laughs> there right. anymore. I was uh, curious about yeah, yeah, but history. But then, I, then, I, then I realized like this Instagram thing, mm. as I thought it, about it in that time, actually works. I mean, you, you get exposure, people contacted you, contact you, and they want your help. Mm. And I've always gone my own way. I'm not really afraid of what people think, because I don't think I'm very, like, I, I'm not sure, I don't share m very much of my personal opinions about things. And I'm very like, I call it Swedish in one way, I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> diplomatic, but, but I realized that people contact me for help with their training. So then, but it was like from one day to another, it was three or four summers ago, I stopped posting pictures about training because I got a little tired of it. Mm. And then I started posting a picture on my apartment since then, like vases and chairs and rugs and uh, tried to, f to find these all these uh, angles. And uh, the support I got was like none. <laughs> Obviously, because it's a kind of a quick turn from it's training wrong, to, to wrong crowd, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then I had a project upcoming, and I, I uh, posted a lot about the renovation, mm. like the process, how everything like went from one step to another, and then once, and uh, the apartment w became really nice. I think uh, at that time, not necessarily what I've done, would I would have done today, but. Um, but once I sold it, it got a lot of exposure, mm. like all those, because that was three, four years ago and the blogs were bigger than they are today. Right. And so a lot of different, so like the real estate photos. Yeah. yeah the, just the, the, the real viral. estate yeah. photos that they got a, a huge attention, mm. both on, on blogs, on Instagram, but also like different broker firms share them as inspiration. Right which I thought was kind of cool. <laughs> like they actually share some, <laughs> some like a competitive firm yes. of, uh, uh, object as an inspiration. Right. And then, and then it, so that, that's kind of the, like the foundation in, in my Instagram account today. Mm. Uh, then I just continued. Mm. And this apartment that I have right now, I was, I documented a lot more obviously because it was a, a bigger project. I did a lot myself in it, so I was like I was there all the time. So I could do I could do the documentation, and um, once it was finished, it, I put in all my my furnitures and uh, yeah, and then we are where we are today. Right, right. So back to my question, you know, yeah. I, I know you, you know Virgil follows you and some other some other mm -hmm. influential people follow you, and then all the you know magazines and everyone started following you. Was there a shift somewhere when you realized, wow, now it's taken off? Uh, Maybe I don't, I don't really keep track of that, but <laughs> um, it, it's kind of a hard question to, to answer, I think. Um, but obviously, it, uh, it it took a turn somewhere, mm. and I don't know if it was at because I, I I don't I don't I don't know like the the people if if. All the people that are following following me, if they're like big big persons or more like normal guys like you right. and me, right. um, I don't know. And I'm because I'm like my biggest interest are uh, are not celebrities, no. <laughs> so I don't know. People tell me all the time, "Did you know that this guy or the girl follows you?" And I'm no, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> and it was the same thing with Virgil. Yeah, Virgil started following me in the fall some at some time. I had no idea. 
a, a friend told me, and so which I thought was fun, um, but and and a few few weeks earlier, months earlier, I was uh, I was able to to go to um, Ger- to Germany with Vitra, another furniture company, on like a press trip, and uh, because he was doing a collaboration with them, right? So I was there during the the, the release. And I had an opportunity, we were like 100, 200 people, I got an opportunity to listen to him for an hour or something. And then he to- he spoke about like his journey and how he works today. And I remember even today, it was a, it was very inspiring, it was very fascinating, like how he can manage to do all those things that he do mm. at the same time. And for me, it, it got pretty clear that you can only do that if you simplify it. What do you mean? And, by that? and if you have, you need to have good people around you, of right. course. But he, he, I think I don't know him personally, but I think he he kind of like simplifies the things that he do. He he's not very. He has ideas, mm. but then he probably have other people like put them into reality. I don't know, but and I kind of the, kind of the same thing. I'm a simple guy, and I like to put to do things in a simple way. Why you, you don't have to comp, um, make everything so hard all the time mm. for yourself. Was there anything else from that talk you remember? Because he, he's a trained architect, so he comes yeah. from, from yeah, the yeah. world of design yeah. more than the world of fashion in a way. Yeah, one thing that I actually remember the most and I think was uh, very, very fascinating and inspiring that he because he got the question from the CEO of Vitra, I was like, how do you find people to work with? Mm. Since you have so much going on, you need good people to work with. And he, I don't know if he said it's not that hard, but I, that's how I like, kind of heard it. Mm. It was like, if, you have, if you're good at what you do, and if you have an inspiring, inspiring uh, Instagram account, and I find you, I will follow you. And if I, if I still like you after some time, I will probably reach out to you. And see if we can do something, and uh, that was for me very, very big to hear from a guy like him, and it it told me like he's like everyone else, and that's what I mean. You don't have to do things so complicated all the time, right? And uh, it's very uh, he's he's a humble guy in that way. So when he when the, my friend told me that he started following me, I. I reached out to him, told him about the, the the press trip that I was on, and told him these things that I found it very inspiring, fascinating, and he replied that he he thanked me, he thanked me, and he also told me that he was very happy that he found my account because it was uh, inspiring. He said. And was it after that that you started working together? Because you, you did some work for for the Off White uh, show yeah. in Milan. Yeah, uh, helping them with was it so, like sourcing furniture? Or yeah, what? so we we started talking a bit more. Then a few weeks later, he asked me about what I'm doing, mm-hmm. and I told me told him what I do. And then um, another week or two later on, I had a meeting with their design team, and we, they started talking about their showroom in Milan and uh, wanted my help to to actually source uh, furniture. Mm. And uh, I think through my Instagram, it's it's kind of kind of you you can you can tell what I like, and you can also tell that it's everything doesn't need to have a name on it. It's, if it's a beautiful thing, it's a beautiful thing. It's not the it's not the tag or it's not the name that makes it beautiful. That's that's what adds probably the value, mm. but it's not what it make, makes it beautiful or not. not. So um, yeah, I got the chance to help them. It was a very limited time. I had like three weeks, uh, but I managed. It's like in world of fashion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Different were, timelines in the world mm-hmm, of interior, yeah. I think. And uh, and the problem was that I, I was wor- I was doing it from home, and I had everything had to be there on a certain date in before the the fashion week started mm. in Milan. Mm. So I I had to both source the furniture and make solve the shipping. Make sure they <laughs> yeah, yeah. actually show up. Yeah, yeah, and they, and it all did. A few a few days before, it had to be there. Right. And then I got a lot of positive response from both the design team and and Virgil himself. I think I just this story is so um, inspiring. I think it's also telling. It says uh, volumes about where we are right now in in 
because we talk a lot about collaboration. Uh, I think we at, are at a place where it's, it's, it's a very collaborative atmosphere. Mm-hmm. And you, I think you need to be collaborative in order to succeed, in order yeah. to, to move forward and, and you know, achieve success. You can't just be in your isolated little bubble, or yeah, yeah. at least few people can. Yeah, yeah. And I think Virgil is as a great example of someone who really has taken c- collaboration to, to the next level in a way. Yeah. But it's also inspiring to see your trajectory that's also about... Um, being collaborative and and being in you know in in contact with your audience the way you are with your account yeah. it's almost like you're constantly collaborating with you know you're, you're getting feedback from from people who follow you you're yeah, getting yeah. you're getting i'm i'm sure you're getting comments or requests and and also which I'm, i wanted to talk about now I, I assume you're building your network this way yeah because when you're sourcing furniture it's it's all about network right you're not it's going all about on it, you're yeah. not going on ebay it's, it's you have luck some <laughs> here and there uh, that you can find something that but then it's an uh, <laughs> the downside behind if you find if you f- let's say you find a table that is mm. it is valuable and it is kind of unique the downside behind it is that the people that had it probably didn't know what they had no. so that's kind of that's kind of in a, a sad i think but Obviously. Meaning they didn't take care of it? Or no, not or that they, I mean, they maybe they put it out on uh, uh, Block It or something right. uh, for just a very little, little amount of money. And then you, you, someone like me knows what it is and uh, find it and buy it. And uh, But that, that, that has happened to me maybe two or three times maybe. Right. And, um, and some things I still have and some things are sold, but... It's it's a part of what I like sourcing things. So so, what does it look like? You're sourcing when you as a collector out yeah. there. Is it you know? I mean, I'm block it, which is sort of the Swedish equivalent to eBay or something yeah, like yeah. that. Like like, uh, uh, well, it, it's not uh, it's not auction, but you know, buy and sell. Yeah, basically. it's a sec- secondary market. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I mean, the type of stuff that you find is so unique and refined and and i know you're moving more towards sort of a french aesthetic mm-hmm. and, and french designers and so forth yeah what can you can you give us a little peek into uh, maybe this is uh, business uh secret, <laughs> not at all business, it's, uh, but how, how does it work i mean do you have this website that you're constantly following or do you have dealers that you're emailing with person you know like persons that you are in contact with how yeah. does it work um but as you said, it's it's about networking. Mm. It's those people that have, have been in the business long, they have the biggest network. Mm. The biggest, either you have a good collection or a great collection because you have a lot of money. Right. Then it makes it co- kind of easy. Or you have a really nice collection that is actually and um, more personal, I'd say. It's kind of... I'm really impressed by the people with that having a lot of money but still keep their personality in either they how how the way they're dressed and how they live and uh, mm. both live like a house in their house with apartment but also life in general but on the other side where i am at <laughs> i i'm i don't have like limit limitless of money it's uh so i have to do a lot of sourcing and that's right. the, that's for me that's the um, that's the fun part and networking is a part of it you have to get help and I also come from a sports background. I know that you need people around you. Mm. You have to make friends. And for me, it's, I think ev- this world w- would ma- uh, do better if everyone w- were friends. And it's pretty easy to say. Uh, and it's the same thing with w- the business where I'm in right now. I feel it is kind of a competition. And obviously it is. Um, but I, I think it would work better if everyone were friends and, uh, yeah. Mm. So you, without networking, you're, you're nothing, but sourcing is also a, a knowledge you, you learn. You have to make mistakes to know what to not look for and, and, uh, always buy the best condition that you can afford at the moment. If you if you find something that you really love and really want, but it's not in the in its best condition, don't buy it. Better to save up a few more months and then buy it, the same thing. Why, in the, why is that? It's because then you will appreciate it for longer. Right. And it will. And I don't like talking about the financial thing and and the 
why everything is so valuable today, but that's also a, re- a big reason. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, th- w- w- uh, things with good condition will ev- will always be more attractive right. and keep value. How does your business... Um What's the balance here? Because you do interior work that you're actually creating these environments and spaces yeah. and so forth. And then you are also helping with sourcing of furniture yeah. and so forth. Uh, and also from, yeah, I'm curious, like how much is private and how much is, are these, uh, um, you know, collaborations with brands or, or showrooms. And I know yeah. you did a shop for, for the Swedish sneaker brand uh, CQP uh, yeah. or did some work with them. Mm-hmm. What's, the, what's the balance here? How, how do right you now it's like 50-50, mm-hmm. I th- I'd say. It's, uh, and I have, uh, I have different parts in my, in, my, in my business or in my, uh, one, one side is the private projects that I'm doing. It could be, from like my like I've done myself like a, a full renovation from really start to finish, uh, or it could be to be to find the right uh, workers or, it, and then you have the like the middle part where that I work with companies like CQP or Fritz Hansen or Hestens, right. uh, that where I either help them to source things or I do their. Um, campaigns as a stylist, uh, like their photo campaigns, and um, and then I have like then I'm trading a little bit of furniture, so I'm constantly constantly doing something, and all the these three parts are the things that I really enjoy. Do you, do you shoot everything yourself for for the social media content and when you do stuff for brands? Do you, do you shoot it yourself? Are you a photographer uh, also or no? Um, like my own content, I shoot myself with with my with my phone. <laughs> it's not harder than that. Uh, I probably I don't know if I should change strategy. It seems to work pretty well. Um, but when I do things for for companies, I obviously we always bring in a photographer. Right. I mean. Like the thing we did for Heston recently, Heston's recently, it, it, it was a worldwide campaign. It cannot be a, a mobile pictures, no. <laughs> <laughs> we can, but it's... Well, I feel like <laughs> the, 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 the phone companies would, or the, the Apples and yeah, the Samsungs, yeah, yeah. they would love, love for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think also the way, you, the, the way your apartment is lit and how uh-huh. it's, you get so much for free in a way from a photographic standpoint. Yeah. You know? it's, it's so beautiful. It's fun. Every, everyone, every, every time I, um, I have to say like a real photographer, since I'm not a photographer uh, professionally, but and when they come to my home, they, they do this little round trip in my home to, mm-hmm. to see all the angles. Mm-hmm. And everyone so far has said, this is a beautiful home you have. Photo wise, uh, also that's what they look look for, like all right. the angles, and I and I agree, and I think I've checked all checked <laughs> all the angles so far, and I'm I'm looking for new ones, um, and it's funny when I when I put put out a picture, when I when I found a new angle and put out that picture, you can you can tell that people that some people that are following me. They basically live in my home because they 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 they, <laughs> they 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 either reach out or comment like, "Oh, this was a new angle," <laughs> which is it's kind of unique. I think I don't know. <laughs> oh, that's a uh, dedi- yeah. dedicated uh, following. Yeah, or if I have moved something, like I've moved, I sometimes do, I've done that a few times just for fun. Mm. Can you spot what's different in these right. pictures? Right. Where's and, Waldo? Uh, yeah, yeah, and then <laughs> obviously, and uh, yeah, like. It doesn't take that much time before someone's like, "Yeah, that vase didn't wasn't there <laughs> two weeks ago." <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. Um, so, are you looking for a new space? I mean, seven apartments in eight years, meaning that in that rate, you should be working on a new apartment right now. You know, I have uh, so many ideas in my head mm-hmm. constantly. Like, I probably have plus hundred of thoughts every day. Right. And I still have a lot of thoughts and ideas that I haven't been able to accomplish yet like in, in, a, in a project. So, I'll, yeah, of course, I, I, I don't feel like I, I, don't, I don't want to move right now, but I feel I'm, yeah, I'm looking forward to the next project and when it will be, I don't know. Do you feel like you're getting, is it, is it less of a desire to move your own place when you're working with other spaces, you're working with other yeah. people's apartments, so you can sort of, you know, access your creativity that way? It's 
for me right now, I it's not it's that's not the reason. It's more like time. You mm. know, when I'm out either traveling or helping others, or I need some somewhere to store all my things. Mm. Um, it's not. It's more of a, about a timing timing um, uh, factor right now. Mm. So, but it, it's it's going. I'm going to move probably <laughs> probably right soon. I don't know when though. All right. I think it's going to be a huge event for your following. Uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. <laughs> so let's talk about this issue of, of sort of reducing furniture and mm-hmm. sourcing vintage furniture. Because I think, you know, we, we, we commit to talking about sustainability from, from many different angles on this show. Uh, you just came back from Paris. I noticed that you, you hung out with the, our friends from Broadway and Sons, uh, yeah. this uh, Swedish Gothenburg-based um, dealing with with vintage clothing and yeah. army surplus clothing and i've had some conversations with nathaniel who who, who runs body and sons about uh, the issue of you know why should we buy new when there's so much beautiful old stuff basically yeah, yeah. and i i know you you come at it from that angle in a way too you, yeah, you're, you're mm. dealing with with vintage furniture and it's uh, i'm curious to hear your thoughts about this and I really agree, and I think that's where we, because I'm good friends with with um, with Nathaniel and also his little brother, uh, and uh, we we're talking about this all the time. And it's uh, why, I mean, for me, it's because uh, I've been I've been in this like vintage world, secondhand world for a long, long time, and uh, I probably bought second-hand clothes for about 15 years mm. and I'm not that old so and and I don't I rarely buy new clothes today it's mostly second-hand even sneakers not sneakers yeah but yeah that's kind of some some are old yeah right. uh, but um, but but then because I feel it is old things they have something that new that new don't and it's the it's the history, and it's also patina charm. You can put it in many ways. Mm-hmm. And there's there is something about a pair of Levi's from the sixties, seventies, or eighties that barely stick together. They are more like jersey pants that you wear when you're home alone. And no one's can, no one's can see you. Right. <laughs> so it's uh, that, and that's a feeling you cannot get from off the rack in a, in a store today. If you're not going to a vintage store, and it's the same with with furniture, then. Yeah, but then then there's a <laughs> like a sofa have to stick together. It's right. it's a kind of a good thing, <laughs> uh, but but it's the same thing. I mean, things that were designed in the 30s, 40s, 70s, uh, 50s, or because you have to say some like the difference between second hand and vintage um, is the age. Mm. Second hand is something, I mean, if you buy something today, hand it in on a store and I buy it next week, then I bought it second hand. Mm. It's not vintage. Mm. If you bought it new though. But vintage, it is after a certain age and it's, some say it's 30 years or maybe it is like a more firm um, like transition. Maybe it's before the 80s or something. I don't know. Or nineties, kind of, maybe. What's your? How do you define your taste there? I'm, I'm curious because uh, we we talked about it before we started the interview that you perhaps started with a more like a Scandinavian mm-hmm. uh, uh, taste level in a way with sort of dealing with Danish furniture and yeah. looking towards that. Now you move more south towards France and that yeah. history. What gets you going now? What, what are the, some of the, the the styles that you like and from which era and so forth? I think I have gone through the same transition and the same experience that many others collectors in something they do because when you when you get into something you go in pretty pretty wide mm. and pretty pretty broad and you're basically getting everything that you can find and then after some time you feel like you land in something mm. and what that something is it's hard for me to say for I can just talk to my for myself but what I've landed in is more a warmth that I feel more continental, especially French furniture have. And, I, and for me, I also think the history behind all these things are more fascinating. Uh, I mean, it was a different, different time. Obviously, during the 40s, 50s, 60s, Sweden went through a tough time too. 
or Scandinavia. Mm. But like the continent, the, the continental part of Europe, this, the, they, they had it real tough <laughs> so because of the war. And, mm. yeah. uh, but so that, that's what I think it's um, the main reason. But also, as I said, the warmth. And I've, the, the deeper I've got in, gotten into my own collecting, the more basic I get. And what's more basic than wood? <laughs> and that's how you define warmth? Like the yeah, the it, it has something, and if you compare steel or mm. or to wood, in in an in an interior environment, I think it's going to add more warmth. Absolutely. Do you think we're we're moving towards that as a um, sort of the general taste level? Because I think, at least from my personal standpoint and what I see also in in magazines and so forth, I think people are longing for something that's. A little bit more cozier, in a yeah, way. Yeah. Because uh, when I I used to work for the interior magazines, geez, it started like fifteen years ago. We were on the we just gone through this whole minimalist uh, period yeah. in a way, yeah. where everything was so sort of you know cleaned out from yeah. from the nineties and eighties, and we just started in a blank slate in a way. Mm-hmm. And then we've sort of slowly moved year by year towards something that's more texturized yeah. and more warm and more cozy yeah. and we we sort of allow ourselves to have more stuff in a way around us uh, also yeah. i'm sure we could view your apartment sort of kind of like a minimalist uh it's definitely it's clean yeah. in, in in the basics but but uh, i'm curious uh, how you see this it's uh, i think scandinavia in or is very known for their minimalistic minimalism in both clothing and, and interior mm. And uh, I'm a very minimalistic guy, like in 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 the, in the base, you know. I, and I think if you have a beautiful object, it could be something. It could be a chair, or it could be just an object. In order for that to to shine, you have to have a pretty clean environment around it. And it doesn't ne- necessarily mean that the room should should be empty, because mm-hmm. that's like that's very very strict minimalism. That's like a gallery. And I think that's the balance between living in a gallery and a home. Obviously, it's personal. <laughs> uh, what you define as what, but also it is. You have to have a little like a structured mess or something. Yeah. I, and and I I think I will have a lot of people against me now when I say my home is a mess because it's not. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> but but I think what they, I I think they know what I mean when I'm saying that is. I mean, if you have, if you follow all the rules out there, then it, it's going to get less um, exciting mm. and less interesting. So a mess could be break some rules. Not that you have to have all your pillows on the floors and clothes clothes all the, all, all over. So that's what I'm. It has to be a little rock and roll. <laughs> Speaking about clothes, and we, you mentioned your your sort of uh, uh, fashion um, taste briefly before. I think. One of the things that's sort of fascinating about you is if you look at your interior photos, mm-hmm. and I think if you know, show that to anyone and, and try to guess what this guy looks like who lives yeah. here, I don't think you would picture you because you have. It's just, no, I don't to think me, either. this is a stark <laughs> contrast. You see, you're wearing sort of Air Jordans and you know ripped Levi's jeans and a bunch of tattoos, and and, yeah. and I think if you, if you show some a photo of you, how does this guy's apartment look like? You wouldn't see you see. No, no, no. I think it goes. Uh, it's it's the opposite. Right. And I don't know if a guy who looks like me, how how do you define his or his home? Like I don't yeah. know. I mean, how should my home look, or how should I dress, depending on how, on how my home looks? I don't know, mm. uh, and I think that's the that's what I mean. I've always gone my way, gone my own way, and I think and I really encourage people to do the same thing. I mean, if you know what if you know what you like, and if you know what you what you want in life, why you can always take pick up some advices here and there. I'm not saying you should you should um, lock everyone out but it's why listening to someone to everyone what they say especially the the ones that you have the closest because <laughs> they they have the strongest opinions right and and that that, that can affect you but then also the backside b- behind having like a big instagram account is also strong opinions but i'm very luckily i'm very very blessed i, I don't i don't have many people that have 
like strong opinions in a, in a negative way. Mm. Not at all. They're m- very much, um, and if they're listening to this, I have to say <laughs> thank you for following and thank you for being so kind and supportive. So no no haters out there. No, for no. For Fede N- Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, and I don't strive for it either. And I strive to be, to become very controversial or uh, I obviously I have opinions uh, on a lot of things but I don't think I don't find it very needed to be to come out no do, do you think your personal style I mean I have so, a little bit of a theory around this that you mm-hmm. the, the the fact that your personal you know fashion sensibility is so so in stark contrast to your your interior world I think that perhaps has helped you in a way. I think perhaps it, it gives a sort of, um, yeah. I don't know, je ne sais quoi, some, some, some uh, ec- excitement around it. Right? It's like, well, how come it's this guy look, he has a home that looks like this? Yeah. Uh, I don't know, it's, 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 an, it's a reflection on my part. Because I, mean, I, I know that you're, yeah. you're posting a little bit more about you know, photos of yourself uh, and, and you know, the more you are visible on, it, you know, kind of like events in the interior world and so forth people get a more sense of how you look like uh-huh. and you just mentioned before that you get you know you know stopped on the street or in a bar or something people recognize you mm-hmm. um how do, how do you feel about this being sort of a it's a public figure ish in a way from yeah um, i um i think it's really fun and i don't it's kind of a i don't i don't f- i'm not I'm kind of a reserved person. I'm more towards the introvert than the extrovert. And uh, um, and I don't need the attention, really, uh, for myself. I, I, I Obviously, I need attention for what I'm doing. And that's the, w- that's the way I would prefer the attention to be more towards wh- what I'm doing. And um, obviously, a little bit on how I look. Because it's for me, it's personal. And I, that's what I really, as I said, I really encourage people to to just get out, get out, get out there, and be more yourself. Because mm. I am myself to hundred percent, and I always strive to be. Mm. And it's more important for me to say, I'd rather say no to, to something than because I that's what I wanted than say yes because you you yeah everyone around you said you why didn't you take that opportunity or because it was not in my it's not in my, um, yeah, what I stand for or who I am. So, but there, there's not a, like a, it's not very well thought out how, why I look this way. It's, it's, uh, I've gone through, like many others, gone through changes during the years. Mm. Um, but now I, <laughs> I can always grow out the hair, I can, but it's hard to do something about all the tattoos, yeah. <laughs> 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 and I feel it's, um, it's the same thing with with my with my journey with furniture. It's I've gone through a lot of different styles clothing wise, mm. and I've landed in some soft old jeans uh, and a, and a hoodie. That's how I dress most of my days. But are there still <laughs> similarities to how you uh, you know approach clothes and yeah. furniture because you know sometimes on your social media you, you you know sometimes there's like a pile of levi's and you can tell like okay you're this seems like yeah, a passion yeah. as well this seems like a collection yeah. as well but but the the um, similarity between an um, old furniture and old clothing is the is the history and it's the beauty that i mean one thing that money never can buy is that what what has happened over time right and it, that's what I'm interested in. I want to know where were, where were these pair of jeans made and then try to figure, and, and where, when and where were, they, were these made and then try to figure out what has, try to figure out the journey they, they've gone through. Mm. And it's the same thing like uh, some of my, my furniture at, at home or that, I've, that I saw in Paris recently and during my trip there in, in the galleries. Like I saw one of Jean Prouvé's first shares that he ever made mm. was for the university in his hometown. It was made in the 30s. It, and um, she told me there was uh, around 60 known of these shares. Mm. And then I saw another at Patrick's home. 
And I was like, oh, I've seen two out of those 60. That's pretty cool. <laughs> and you, you can, and then from there, you can actually see that that was like the foundation of his very well-known standard chair. Mm. I could see it. It has a totally different look. The, the, the standard chair in comparison to that, this uh, first one was basically a, a prototype. But you can see that it started, it started there. And it's the same thing like with, um, yeah, so oh, the deeper I get, the, the more I get, the more I go towards old things. And also it's less about the things, if you can say that. It's more about the community. Mm. And, I mean, denim is a very, very strong community. And furniture and design, art, uh, I don't know much about cars, but that's a strong community watches uh, everything has a community right but uh, and it's that's also what i'm really enjoying and i'm the community and that's what i even though me and nathaniel at broadway and son we we share different opinions we like different things but we have one thing in common and it's the it's the it's the passion for something and then through um, around this passion it is a few principles that all, every time is the same, even if it is. Is he? He likes cars. I'm. I'm. I like cars too, but I'm not a car guy like him, not at all. But he can talk cars to me, and I. Re, I understand exactly what he says if he skips all the the mechanical part, and then, and I can talk my things with him because he understands what I'm what I'm saying, and uh, yeah. So it's. And what are those principles that you mentioned that are the same? If you even if you talk about cars or watches or Levi's jeans or. Design. I think uh, if we're talking older things, I think uh, it's the reason why it was made. I think is a strong, strong um, principle. Like everything, like if you look back, why were denim produced? Mm -hmm. It was basically it was it was produced for wor workwear, and it was. And you cannot obviously you can make den you can make denim today as they looked in the past, or you can make them innovative in one way. But as if you get into denim today and try to, col to get your own collection, you will probably, as I said before, go in pretty wide, collect everything. Right. But then you will land in the somewhere, the original. And that's one, I think, and also the history, and it kind of goes together. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then it's, it's the same thing with the, the charm and the patina, the, the time factor that, that money can't buy. Are these things you talk about when you meet a guy like Patrick, for instance, like yeah. there's a heavyweight collector, you know, been around long in the industry. Are these mm -hmm. some of the same conversations that you have? You, do you connect with the same Yeah, yeah, ideas? for sure. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to Paris next week as well and meeting others, um, other collectors. Mm. And um, I mean, all these are, these are pe people that I, I'm very blessed of having my Instagram uh, because then I can actually come through. Mm. Uh, if I would have sent an email saying, "Hey, I'm Frederick from Stockholm. I like old old furniture. Uh, do you want to have? <laughs> do you want to meet over a co coffee?" I would probably never get a, a reply. No. So I'm blessed in that way. But it, but then once we meet and once we talk, it's very very. It's no no prestige at all. It's just passion is passion. We. Even, I mean, age is just a number. And uh, yeah, even though he, for example, is, is where he is right now and been doing this for 30 or four or more years, and I've been, and I've been collecting for, in, for um, yeah, a long time as well, in comparison to my age. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we meet somewhere. And it's kind of hard to say where, but it's, I th I I used to say this all the time, and I'm when I'm talking to these people, it's very interesting. You are who you are, and I am who I am. I'm from Stockholm. You are from somewhere else, and uh, all the all all the, the thing that is happening right now is passion meets passion. Right. Let's talk about your uh, your own trajectory. I mean, mm -hmm. you're 30, 31. 30, yeah, I'm 31. turning thirty one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you started out as a golf instructor, or came from sports uh -huh. uh, very much. Did yeah. you? Did you? In your, I don't know, previous life, or or how you should call it, 
did you always dream about working with these things or did, it, sort of, <laughs> did it gradually <laughs> shift? No. Um, I think I was uh, handed a golf club at the age of three or four. Okay. Because golf has been in my family for a long time. If we go back mm. uh, to my grandfather, uh, for example. And uh, my dad's played golf for, from the, started out in the 70s something and got really hooked quickly. And um, so my dream when I was a kid was to become a professional golfer. And uh, so I basically started competing golf when I was 12. All right. Reached um, a high national level at age of 15, 16. I uh, was a little bit in the around the, and in the national team when I was, yeah, was between 16 and 18. I went to two years of college uh, in Phoenix. Uh, when I was nineteen and to twenty one, was that on a scholarship for golf or was it? Yeah, it was. It was was for golf, right? And um, and it was it was um, probably the those two years uh, when I look back have probably had the strongest impact on who I am today. Mm. Just, not just because of like the English and language, and but more like that's that's when I moved moved out of my home and moved from away from my parents mm. and uh, and it was not just three blocks away it was to the other side of the world and I had never flown that far before and uh, it was a it was an amazing experience but it was also an awful experience really yeah I mean because <laughs> I, I can remember <laughs> uh, I can remember calling my dad like sitting on a um, on the floor in the bathroom crying because I wanted to go home again after a week. And then he was like, oh, you can do this. I mean, obviously he, he felt for me, but he was, uh, I cannot do anything. You're on the other side of the world mm -hmm. and it's uh, 12 at night. I have to sleep. You, you just figure it out. You, you, I mean, world, worst things have, have happened, you know? Right. So did did you did you not connect with the people there or what did you feel? I lonely? did, but I was a totally different person. I, I it forced me to get out there. It forced mm. me to talk to people. Um, and as I said, I'm an kind of an introvert people uh, person, and where and still today, where where I actually feel the most comfortable and the most like um, home is when I'm on a practice field at, on a golf course by myself. Really. Yeah, and I can still I couldn't I can be standing there st even though I don't I don't I still play but I don't compete anymore, and haven't done for about seven years. Uh, I can still be out there for a long time, just enjoying what I'm doing, enjoying the yeah myself and uh, yeah the sport the sport of golf. Is, is there anything you learned from the experience of being a, a you know a, a professional athlete that you're sort of taking with you into the the, the world you are right now? Something yeah, about the competitiveness things. or, or yeah, yeah. craft or anything? I'm curious. Um, that you need, to, you need to put in a big effort right. to uh, become something. And um, discipline, of course. And also be curious. Mm. I mean, in, in, when you're doing sports, and if, you know, if you're doing... Because sports is... It's an, uh, how I see golf, it's not very... Uh, it's more about feel. It's more about be able to try new things. And it could be, if we're going to talk details, it could be move your thumb a couple of millimeters and it will actually change something. That your how it affects your swing and how it affects your, your ball flight. And I'm not here to talk golf. But uh, <laughs> but what I mean is the par parallel between that and they, my life nowadays is like, if I want, if I if I want the same result, I can keep doing the same things. Mm. If I want different results, I have to change something. Change something, and uh, that that's what I think. Maybe that was the biggest thing that it has taught me. Probably that you have. If you want the same results, don't do anything different. So wise wise words. What are you most excited about right now? What what's what's going to happen uh, in the near future for for you and your business? Um. I'm really excited about, since I haven't been doing it as a formal business for so long, I'm really excited to see 
where I'm at in about, yeah, because I, I don't know where I'm at in three months. I have right. no idea. And I'm, uh, I'm not open to anything, but I'm open to a lot of things. Um, but what I'm really looking forward is to that my, my passion for this, my, the things that I love, that I can keep doing it and it, what it, where it will take me. Because I, I don't, I don't, obviously I have a plan, s- sort of, <laughs> uh, but I, I'm really, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it because I don't know where I'm at in a couple of months or a year or five years. Maybe I'm not living in Stockholm anymore or maybe I am. Um, I don't know. And, uh, but I have, a, I have a couple of excited projects coming up, um, talking about a project in New York and I'm talking about, I have a, few ones starting here in Stockholm and uh, I will be doing more work for, for Hestens, which I'm really looking forward to, Chris Hansen as well. Uh, and obviously keep do keep collecting my, my, my furniture. That's great. It's going to be great following your journey. I feel like maybe we should do this again in a year or so to see where yeah, you're, of course. Where, where you're at then. Yeah. Uh, where can people find you? What's the, what's the handle? Is the Instagram the best way to, to find your... Yeah, Instagram is definitely the best way. And it's uh, Frederick Carlson Interiors. So it's Frederick with a K. And not spelled the American way with an E after D. Mm-hmm. And then Carlson with a K Interiors. Frederick Carlson Interiors. Felix, yeah. thank you so much for talking to me today. Thanks for having me. It was a pleasure. Awesome. This has been The Innovators, an interview show from Scandinavian Man with me, Conrad Olson. We'll be back soon with more conversations on design, culture, fashion, technology, and sustainability. For more news and interviews from the Scandinavian fashion and culture scene, visit ScandinavianMan.com. Thanks for listening. Goodbye.